George Ladd, 50 years ago, called Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, perhaps the most single important verse in the Word of God for God's people. And he identified message and mission and motive that are contained therein. And I am convinced that in our day, 50 years later, there is significant, even across this room, significant misunderstanding about all three of these things. What is our message? What is our mission? What is our motive? And I'm convinced we're confused on all three. So I want to read this verse and consider those three questions. It was on the Mount of Olives when Jesus' disciples asked him about the end of the age, and he responded by saying, This gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. What is our message? The good news, this gospel of the kingdom. Our God is king. He reigns. He rules over all. Psalm 103, 19, the Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Our God is sovereign over all nature. The wind blows at his bidding. The sun radiates with heat from his hands. Every single night, our God brings out the stars one by one, and he calls them each by name. Bob. <laughs> Mary. z 14369 I don't know what their names are, but our God does. By his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. There is not a speck of dust that exists apart from the sovereignty of God, our King. He is sovereign over nature and he is sovereign over nations. He charts the course of countries. Our God holds the rulers of the earth in the palm of his hand. And he's sovereign over all of them. And that is good news. And you and I can go to any of those places and share the exact same message. To say to anyone and everyone, there was a man who sinned and from his sin, condemnation has come to all men. All of us have sinned against our Creator King. And eternal death is our inevitable due from this one man. But there came a second man, like the first in every way, yet without sin. And he was the creator king in the flesh. He had sovereignty over nature, lifted his hands and the storms were stilled. He had sovereignty over disease, lame walking, blind seeing, deaf hearing. He had sovereignty over sin, the righteous one who had no guile in him at all. And he had sovereignty over death, People who were in their tombs heard his voice and came to life. He himself was raised from the dead. Death no longer has mastery over him, Romans chapter 6. The creator king has come, and he has come to bring a kingdom. And to all who believe on his name, 
as the one who has overcome sin and conquered Satan and crushed death to all who believe on his name, you can share in his kingdom now and forever and ever and ever. That, that's really, really good news. And it works anywhere in the world. You can't stop the gospel of the kingdom when it's being proclaimed in the power of the Spirit. Don't minimize this one. Don't malign this one. Trust this one. It'll do the work. That's our message. What is our, what is our mission? What's our mission? Matthew 24, this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. Oh, there's so much here. What I want you to see is the where and the how of our mission. Let's, let's start with the where. Throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. Panta ta ethne. Same phrase used in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 in the Great Commission. And oh, this is so key because I think we, we miss this. Even in all of our talk about missions, we miss this. Nations here is not geopolitical entities and countries like we think of nations today. Around 200 nations recognized in the world today. These are not the nations that Jesus is talking about here. The United States of America did not exist in Matthew chapter 24. This is ethne, tribes clans, families, peoples, commonly called people groups today. And this is where biblical, anthropological, missiological scholars have looked at the world and identified as best as we can groups of people who share common languages, common cultural characteristics, and there's far more than 200 such peoples. The IMB tells us there's approximately 11,627 different people groups in the world. 11,627. And it makes sense. You go to India, for example. One nation, India, diverse peoples everywhere. Different languages, different cultural characteristics, different ways of life. You look, it's all over Scripture. And the world, peoples, clans, tribes, families, Amorites, Hittites, Hivites, Jebusites, Canaanites, Baluch, Berber, Hue, Han, and so on and so on and so on. All of these people groups. And in the Great Commission, Jesus is commanding us to make disciples among every single people group. That is our task. That begs the question then, how are we doing? And I mentioned earlier, 6,750 people groups are still classified as unreached meaning less than 2% evangelical Christian here. Now follow this. I think this is a huge misconception. When we say unreached, we're not just talking about lostness. We're talking about access. You say, well, there's unreached people right around me, meaning unsaved people, but that's not what unreached means. Unreached means that you don't even have access to hear the gospel. There's no church. There's no Christian, no, no Bible available or around you. So practically, to live amongst an unreached people group practically means that you would be born, you would live, and you would die without ever hearing the gospel. And out of those 6,750 unreached people groups, Brian shared with us yesterday, 3,800 of them are still classified as unengaged, meaning not only do they not have access, but no one is presently, intentionally working to make the gospel accessible to them. And this is where I want to say that if we, in our lives and our churches, are not intentionally 
going after unreached people groups with the gospel, then we are disobeying the Great Commission. Maybe a little, a little more pointed. Pastor, if you, in your life, in your church, are not intentionally going after unreached people groups with the gospel, then you are disobedient to the Great Commission. God has not just commanded us to make the gospel known among as many people as possible. He has commanded us to make the gospel known among all the peoples. Period. Brothers and sisters, this is our command. And it is clear. We have not been given a general command just to make disciples among as many people as possible. As, as natural as that might sound to us, our God has said to us, make disciples among every single people group. Our commanding officer has said, I mean to rescue a people from every tribe, tongue, language, nation for King Jesus. And therefore, obedience to the Great Commission necessarily involves commitment of resources to get the gospel to unreached people groups. This is not an option for us biblically. God has told us from the very beginning, this is, the, this is how God has always divine mission, all the way back to the Abrahamic covenant in Genesis chapter 12, all the way to the heavenly chorus in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 and 10, when a people, a large throng, not just as many people as possible, but a specific people comprised of every tongue, tribe, nation, will gather around the throne of Christ and sing salvation belongs to our God and to the Lamb who sits on the throne. Revelation chapter 5 verse 9, you have, worthy is the Lamb for, for you have purchased men for God from every tribe, tongue, people, and nation. Our King deserves the praise of more than just 5,000 people groups. Our King deserves the praise of all 11,000 Six, 750 people groups on the planet. And so, so, so how do we get it to them? That's the where, here's the what. You proclaim it. Oh, to think of this, that God has not entrusted this mission to angels for them to accomplish it in dreams and visions. What was he thinking to entrust it to us? What mercy, what love, that He, the King of the universe, would invite you and me to be a part of fulfilling His grand global redemptive plan in all the ages. That you and I have been invited by the King to be a part of this. What, what mercy, what grace, why would we not give our lives and our churches to accomplishing this mission? And that's the point of Matthew chapter four, 24, verse 14. This can be accomplished. This will be accomplished. This gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Believe that. Believe that. Believe that. The king is coming back when the mission is complete. And this is our motive. What's our motive? What's our motive? We want our King to come back and receive the praise that He is due. When you, I, when we decide to intentionally engage unreached people groups with the gospel, we can expect to be met with the might of hell. Divisions within us, distractions 
around us, deceptions tempting us, disease and death threatening us. He doesn't want the end to come. The question is, do we? And are we willing to pay the price? Are we willing to relook at everything we're doing in our churches and all of our budgets? Say, how can we? Yes, make disciples here in a way that is intentionally engaging in making disciples there. We're willing to pay the price. You say, well, aren't there other Christians who can do this better than us? Local Christians who can do this? In those places around the world, why don't we just support them financially and let the locals do it? That's the point. There are no locals. There's no local Christians. There is no local church. That's what it means to be unreached. And God's design is not for us just to send our money while we sit back, watch TV, and get fat and let them lose their lives. No. We pay the price. And brothers and sisters, we receive the reward. See it. The reward. The end will come. Do you want the end to come? Do you want the king to come? Do you want to see his face? Could it be? Could it could it be that we might see the completion of the Great Commission in our day? We have the resources. God has given them to us. People, gifts, money, and more important and above over all that. We have the very Holy Spirit of God in us. You say, I don't know if my church can really engage unreached people groups to, to embrace an unreached people group. I don't know if we're big enough, have enough resources to do that. How big is your God? He wants the praise of that people group more than we do. And he has committed the divine resources of heaven to those who are abandoned to accomplishing this commission. Finishing this commission. Brothers and sisters, by the grace of God and with the power of God, let's finish this thing. And you say, people say, well, oh, wait, 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 just a second. How do we know our definition of people group is right? Or how do we know when they're officially reached? Are you saying, are you saying that Jesus couldn't come back today? There's no question that we don't know for sure that our definition of terms is right. And so absolutely Jesus could come back today, come back any moment now. But this is, this is where I can't improve on George Ladd's words. He said, God alone knows the definition of terms. I cannot pre- precisely define who all the nations are, but I do not need to know. I know only one thing. Christ has not yet returned. Therefore, the task is not yet done. When it is done, Christ will come. Our responsibility is not to insist on defining the terms. Our responsibility is to complete the task. So long as Christ does not return, our work is undone. Let us get busy and complete our mission. With this message, this mission, this motive, let us leverage this convention. Let's lead our churches. Let's give our lives. Let's lose them if necessary for the advancement of Christ's kingdom and the accomplishment of Christ's commission. And let's do it all with our eyes fixed on the sky where one day the Son of Man is going to come in clouds with glory and power and His angels are going to gather the elect from the four winds from every tribe, tongue, people, and nation. We will see His face and we will see our King and we will reign with Him forever and ever and ever and ever. Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly.